what did the attack feel like? So that my first attack, it felt like, you know, a knife cutting through your whole heart, like, you know, the, uh, you go to the market, you see how they slice the pork, the liver, that's how the pain is. It's so terrible, it didn't go down. So I felt very shiverish. You can literally feel uh, like ants crawling up, just biting you off. It started from the feet below. It started to go in, like it's going up, uh, it's so painful. At that moment, I thought I was going to die. It didn't feel like a heart attack at all. It just felt like maybe like some muscle ache. In terms of pain, it didn't feel very painful. Some numbness in the hands, some numb discomfort in the chest. Halfway through walking, I felt like I uh, was getting a bit like breathless. So I find a place to sit down. Then I felt slowly my jaws uh, becoming numb and uh, as if like I'm losing strength in my jaws. It was one hour later when I realized something was very wrong. Uh, okay, like one to one to one and a half hours later, and then at that point I felt like I was gonna just so like that. My mom was sitting beside me lah, so I was just telling her, "Hey, call ambulance, eh?" Because I stay opposite Sengkang Hospital. Uh, my mom was like telling me, "I just walk there only la. Can lah, you can walk there." Then I was like, "No, mom, I'm like, I cannot already. Please just call the ambulance." I was feeling some like uh, discomfort on my arm, but it, it didn't feel very normal. So I just stopped the car at the car park, sat outside the car to, to rest. Oh. By some chance or luck, uh, my ex-colleague just happened to be at the car park. It's a random car park opposite Maxwell Market. And then I told him what was going on. And that was when he insisted that I went to the hospital. If I was a passerby looking at me, I, I probably wouldn't recommend going to the hospital. Yeah. I was still thinking I was okay, I shouldn't be anything because I already went for stand twice. I just carry on with whatever I'm doing. So I was just taking it easy until the thing keep on coming very often. Then I said, better I talk to my cardiologist about it. When I was going through my therapy, I met some other patients as well. When they first get their heart attack, right? All the reaction was very different. To me, the impression of having a heart attack is like uh, your heart going into a severe pain and then you maybe just fall on the floor and then you start to like squirm around and things like that. They're like, like, oh, I'm in pain, that kind of feeling, but eh, no, leh. it's not like that. <laughs> Did you expect it to happen to you? No, I didn't expect it to happen to me. <laughs> Never in my dream that I thought it would happen to me. La. My father had, had this, my grandfather had this, so I, I always knew that. You know, somehow I was at risk, la, but I felt I still had 20 years to go. La. I'll be very frank, my lifestyle was pretty bad. Like, I drink a lot, I smoke, yeah, and I sleep very little. But of course, there are people that whom I hang around with, right? They are far worse than me. Those smoker, hardcore smoker, one, one day, one pack, that kind. But I'm only social, one week, maybe two, three sticks, that kind. The first thought that came to my head was, eh, hey, why not them? Why is it me? So I didn't smoke, I didn't drink. I would say I'll probably attribute it to the last two, which is I, I'm a little bit of a workaholic and I also, uh, I also had really bad eating habits. My diet five, six years ago, which was like a heavy zhicha meal at night, nasi lemak for breakfast, and maybe lunch is biryani. It sounds a little bit far away, like the, this idea that a young person can get like a heart disease, yeah, is, it's an alien idea to me. I was an RSM in the army. I considered myself very super fit. I played badminton seven times a day. When it came, it was because of my diet, change of lifestyle, I got married, and no time for exercises. My wife doesn't work. I got three kids at that point in time. All time is family time. Once you have a family, most of it is family time. Eight o'clock, I start work right up to 5.45. Most often times, uh, I reach home at about 8.30. By the time you go home, you want to unwind. And besides that, sometimes on your weekends, you've got to find time to bring them out. Usually when we go shopping, they will go and shop. I will sit at McDonald's. I'll read my new paper and I'll order the food. So the many hours that I shop, the many hours that I eat. And my other thing is that I love gassy drinks. I can drink 1.5 liter Coke, just like that. That's a downside, you see, if you can open up, I think, all gas inside here. So that's my way of exercise or distressing.
will you die earlier? Uh, honestly speaking, I don't know if I will die earlier, but I hope I don't. The chances of getting another heart attack is a lot higher as compared to normal uh, people. During the very first instant when I had the first heart attack, all this come through my mind. What's going to happen if I die? When I heard the doctor say that I have to go for bypass, oh my god, I teared. Especially when I went for the angiogram, the procedures, I really teared until the doctor you know, met me. He said, don't worry, everything will be okay. Before I go for my bypass, I told my husband, maybe I won't be coming back. <laughs> and then my children, my husband start crying. <laughs> when I was on the uh, operation table, they actually did angioplasty for me. The, the nurse was telling me, uh, he said he hoped it was a muscle spasm so that I don't have to put any uh, stand or do any ballooning. Halfway through the operation, he said, uh, boy, uh, you need to do the ballooning, you need to, do the, you need to put a stand inside, 95% clock. If you don't do it right, I don't know whether if, you were, if anything will happen to you. Uh. So he didn't give me an option, to be honest. He just immediately inserted the stand. I, I could feel that I was going into shock. I was like, ugh. Wow, it's so painful, man. Like, I was just lying down there. So when he was telling me a lot of things, I was like, uh, please, just do whatever you need to do. And I just want to get out of this operation table as quick as possible. They don't have a bigger table for me. So I had a difficulty, you know, I have to balance myself. Because my size was so huge, at 130 kg, and my arteries are, uh, it's not like very nice trees that can come out very nicely. So my, my vein, uh, one of my uh, veins was intertwined in that sense. So when he put in the thing, uh, it cannot hook, you know. I still remember, people go in there, uh, 20 minutes can come out. Mine was 40 minutes, you know, I cannot tahan it. And that was a wake-up call. Yeah, I don't know whether I will die earlier, it's not up to me to decide. Yeah, uh, but I would say that psychologically, I think the, the biggest effect on me was being much closer to the idea of of like, you know, even death, you know, I, I felt, I think, a little bit less invincible and a little bit more vulnerable. Uh. Can you still live a normal life like before? My favourite food is actually, is mutton biryani, but normally I take it once a month. Uh, even three, three, four months, once I eat mutton also, my children will tell me, Mommy, you better don't eat mutton so much, you already suffered enough. I think I can live uh, maybe close to 70% of how I lived in previously. I used to love KFC a lot. So now whenever I see fast food, it's like, to me it's like, Ugh, you are the cause of my heart attack, things like that. So like, no, no more, no more fast food for me. Now it becomes like a gym kind of uh, food, diet routine. Uh, like you can only have a cheat day once a week, things like that. Sometimes it's very frustrating. You cannot live a normal life per se. Uh. You cannot go for buffets anymore. You take veggie and all that, you know, it's uh, not worth the money. So now I cut no buffets. When I went to the dietitian, surprisingly, one of the first things they asked us to cut off our diet is, is fruit juice. I found it to be quite ridiculous, yeah. She said, like, you're, you're, it's okay for you to take biryani, yeah, once in a while, but and I want you to cut out all fruit juice from your diet. I apologise to the Fruit Juice Sellers Association for saying that. They always tell me to keep my heart rate within a certain figure, which is I think 127 or something like that. I guess I cannot do too much vigorous exercises, uh, which until now I still don't dare to do. La. In the past, I, uh, I used to do Muay Thai, I used to go dance, I used to go jogging, things like that. I have been carrying the gas tank, you know, the gas tank. All that, I used to fix it myself. I feel tired very easily after doing my housework, normal housework. I don't think I'm 100% perfect before, like before. So yeah, I, I, I want to live a normal life. But it was a process that I had to be disciplined and determined to do it. And after that, I went to Singapore Heart Foundation. And that was a turning point. That's where I went there. There were good physios there. there were, everything was good because it's a collective area where you learn. So from there, I exercise almost uh, five days a week at Singapore Foundation. If we got some question, we can go 
up to them uh, like certain problems you have like sometimes i had my shoulder pain and all that i go to uh, them for help ask them for guidance currently i'm going to singapore heart foundation uh, at fortune center uh, my physio regime is always twice every week i do uh, all the old man exercises or you see all the auntie downstairs playground do all the I don't know what. Yeah, I just do whatever they do, lor. If I don't follow through the physiotherapy regime, right, I might not even go out to exercise at all. Cause I don't know uh, how far can I push my body to. I mean, I might want to go back and run someday, but I do, I'm not sure if I can do it. Like, I don't want to end up running and then fall fall down on the floor and then suffer another heart attack or things like that. When I first suffered my heart attack, right, uh, when the doctor tell me that I cannot run and everything, to me like my world came crashing down. I feel like, hey, shit, I cannot do anything anymore. But when the physiotherapy tell me I can slowly build back up everything, right? So you can see that there's a glimmer of hope. Like suddenly you look at her, then you're like, ding. No, oh, she's your hope, that kind of feeling. I really treasure and appreciate their, their staff. Their staff are very family oriented. So it's a part of a community uh, area where you engage people. From acquaintance, uh, that we become friends. And from that, sometimes we go out together. Same group of people, but when we go out, we cannot any go out eat. <laughs> My group also started to be more health conscious. They started to go cycling with me, things like that. It's quite funny. Lah. Like, what happened to me made some small little changes in my group of friends. Yeah, I think I have to be more conscious about, about you know, saying like, I need to take a break. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll hand out this to someone else. I'll, I'll say, okay, I'm not a perfectionist, but I, I expect high standards when it comes to work. Because I, I, also, I also feel that, like how I work or how I eat makes me who I am also. I like to think that the best way forward is to find some kind of balance. Uh, yeah. Nobody can take care for you. Hey, you got to take ownership of your own life. So that's how I feel that, yeah, we can go back to normal life, provided we, you know, follow that regime. Difficult, but possible. What is one thing you are thankful for in this situation? I'm thankful for my doctor, Dr. Naik, and his team of doctors and nurses who take care of me. My physiotherapist from the Heart Foundation, I would like to thank, thank them for helping me and guiding me on the exercises. Even if you want to go back and you give me a choice not to, not to have problems with my heart, uh, I think I would still strangely choose to have it. Without heart problems, I think I will, I, I, I will not see finding balance between my family and, and, my, and my work like, uh, as a priority. My wife has also been very supportive. She's always watching my health. or like, uh, If she thinks I need to take a breather from work, she always remind me. Uh, when I had my heart attack, right, my girlfriend actually flew down to visit me from where she was staying, uh, which was overseas. Uh. She flew all the way down to see me for a day and then after that, go back, went back again. She kind of like fully accepted my condition and she told me she wanted to take care of me more, things like that. Then I'm like, wow, okay, well. That one is also a edge to memory, yeah, because very touched by what she did for me. The one thing that I'm thankful for in this situation that God gave me a second chance to live life again and to live well. After all this, I just want to share with people who are you know, unaware of healthy lifestyle, you know, how to eat well, exercise well. That's why I, I, I set myself to volunteer in SHF. I, I, I can talk to people about this anywhere, anytime, which I always do. Sometimes, you know, they look at my keroid scar. And that's where you can start conversation already. It's so easy for people to say, but unless you go through, you walk through the journey, then you are able to tell people, hey, I'm saying to you because I have done it, not because I Google and tell you. So we got to look at life positively. It's not the end, but it's just, perhaps it's a process that you go to go through. So I, I just hope that every day will be a challenging day that I can meet somebody to share. Thank you for watching. 
This episode is supported by Singapore Heart Foundation. Did you know that cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death globally? In Singapore, almost one out of three deaths is caused by cardiovascular disease like heart diseases or stroke. Singapore Heart Foundation is a social service agency at the forefront of the battle against heart disease in Singapore. They have educational programs for schools and the community to raise awareness on heart health. They also conduct CPR and AED courses to better equip Singaporeans to respond to incidents of cardiac arrest, as well as rehabilitative and preventive care for recovering heart patients and at-risk individuals outside of their hospital treatments. Canasme Season 4 will be airing every alternate Thursday from 2nd April to 28 May. If you enjoy this series, you can watch more Canasme episodes on our playlist over here. Take care of your hearts!